Are you spying on me, Leone? I think that you are. You're spying on me while I'm reading. That's very rude. I know why you've been sent to me, and it's to learn. You should at least announce your presence when you're in the company of a gentleman. And I should introduce myself. I am a gentleman. I am a canine, sometimes known as a kindred. Although both epithets are likely to fall out of popular use in coming years due to certain scrutinies laid upon our kind. I know you have questions. I can see it on your face. You want to know what you are, who you are, what is this society you belong to, and what book is it that you're reading? Well, that's a good way to start. This book is known as the Jihad Diary. It's a loaded name, I'm sure you would agree. It's by a scholar of our kind by the name of Beckett. And there have been many books important to our kind. The Book of Nod, the Revelations of the Dark Mother, the Yerkes Fragments, the Shal Fragment, the Book of the Grave War in recent years. Books have often led to watershed moments for our kind. Or tablets, scratchings on a slab. They've also led to great downfalls, changes in our fates. This is one such tome, and we will get onto its importance in short order. I can also see you're wondering why we are here. Why are we not in some hustling, bustling city? Why are we not meeting in some skyscraper or a nightclub? And that is because there is no surveillance here. As ironic as it might seem, they don't watch the churches. They don't watch the graveyards. And so, we are here using their bastions as cover. I suppose you want to know a little about our past. So let's talk about the past. And the past is, as they say, prologue. You need prologue in order to know the tale that you are experiencing now. Without it, there is no context. Context is important. So let us talk about origins. There are many supposed origins to our kind, many potential progenitors, some named Cain, the first murderer from the Bible. If you've not read the Bible, I recommend it. You might learn something. Lilith, Set, all kinds of vampires are named, even Mithras from time to time, the god emperor, unconquered son. But the point is, most of our societies believe that there was one vampire to start it all. And that vampire embraced a handful of childer. And those childer embraced another set. A score, maybe more, 13 around that number. And it's those vampires that are important to our story, because 13 antediluvians, as they became known, the third generation. Antediluvian because they survived the great flood of the Bible. That one Noah made so famous? They came before the flood. Those thirteen great Cainites, they imprinted their child and their childer's child, their entire lineage, all of their descendants, with their personality, their ambition, their power. And that is why tonight you might see a Ventru and decide he had to be a Ventru, didn't he? He's power hungry. He's a prince. He is of the clan of kings. And you may look at a La Sombra and say, well, that one skulks in the darkness, tries to use it as a weapon. Has no airs or graces, just bullies and dominates his way around. Now, the reason for this stereotype is because the antediluvians had personalities and they were so powerful, their vitae, their blood, so rich, that they could form lineages, as we call them, clans, families of vampires. And for the longest time, we call it the Long Night, for millennia, we live together, all of our clans, in relative peace and harmony. Yes, there were wars. The Ventru Rome against the Bruja Carthage is the one that is so often cited. But, for the most part, every vampire was the lord of his or her domain. The lord of his or her castle. The mortals, or kine as we call them, an ancient word for cattle, that surrounded those vampires were all potential feeding resources, and no one was there to dispute them. It was a fine time to be a vampire. You could walk down the street at night, 
peasants either side of you. They knew what you were, but they respected you, they feared you, they served you. And if you wanted their blood, you merely had to ask. Or you could sit atop a castle and command using your ghouls, or you could skulk in the shadows and you could prey on the unwary and unwitting. You could be a figure of folklore and legend that was only whispered about in taverns and fest halls. But you could be anything you wanted during the long night. There was no scrutiny, no threat from mortal uprising. The only enemies we had were ourselves, giving in to our beast, our carnal hunger. And most Cainites had that kind of thing under control. But all good things must come to an end, and so came the War of Princes. Around the time many mortals called the Middle Ages, we referred to it as our Dark Age. Because the War of Princes signaled the end to many things. Our borders, our territory, started clashing with one another. Ventru and Tremere went to war with Zimitsi. Bruja warred with Toreador. La Sombra launched their Shadow Crusade against the Banu Hakim, using the Mortal Crusades as cover. All of a sudden, we were at each other's throats. We were no longer just playing the game of being prince. We were fighting for other princedoms, to take them, to annex them. To gain larger herds and great tracts of land, fine properties and all the relics within them. Uh, there was an excitement there. It was enjoyable, I have to admit. Some of the times during the War of Princes, I never felt more alive. But... The War of Princes was not all gay abandon. We made several mistakes. Many princes, especially of clans Ventry, Zimitsi, La Sombra, they would throw their neonates, their fledglings, vampires like you, into the mouth of the enemy by the dozen to make them fall. They had no care for their descendants, they just wished to gain territory. And so, like mortal governments with their armies to get today, you, you just don't care for the soldier's life. You don't care for the army. They are expendable assets. And so was the same for child like you. As you can imagine, you probably wouldn't like that much. Now, we had ways of assuring loyalty, and those ways are sometimes used tonight. You could feed from your elder's wrist, drink from the vein, forge a blood bond from Neonate to Elder, or the other way round. The Elder, having bound the child, would be able to issue a command and that child would feel very much inclined to follow the Elder's whim. This was not just being loyal to a prince, this was blood slavery. And those with enough free mind to rebel against it did so, in an event called the Anarch Revolt, which we will get on to, remember that term. It was not just the unruly Anarchs who spawned from these sects known as Prometheans and Furores that led to the end of the War of Princes and where we are now. It was also the mortals because Cainites had a tendency of using mortals like pieces on a chessboard. Moved them around, bonded great kings and warlords, powerful people, and used them as daytime resources. You may be aware that the Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition, and the Inquisition the Catholic Church used to purge many heresies was present at this time. And depending on the rumor you believe, the Inquisition that targeted us stemmed from that, or the Inquisition that targeted us spawned their more mundane version. But either way, a murderous branch of the Church appeared. Murderous toward us, and werewolves, and magicians, and other creatures of the night. Suddenly it was dangerous to be an open monster. Suddenly you couldn't just sit in your castle and command hundreds of peasants to do as you wish because word would reach the church and when the church found out they would send people knocking and in one hand they would hold a sword and in the other they would hold a burning torch. Havens fell, princes fell, elves were destroyed. It was a terrible time. And this was all because the clans overreached. Cainites, elders, princes, all of these vampires, they overreached. 
they did not act with guile or forethought. And it was to their detriment. Because while the Inquisition were attacking them from one side, and some vampires insisted on continuing to use those church assets, they continued to insist on saying, I'm the one with the true power over the Catholic Church. Look mainly to Clan La Sombra for the blame here, although the Bruja are not exempt. And they just inflamed the situation. They drove it further. They thought, if the Inquisitors know about vampires, I can send them against my enemies. But flames tend to spread. And in our case, they often consumed the wielder. So the Inquisition were on one side. The Anarchs were on the other. In the middle was the establishment, the elders, the princes of Europe and the known world. And they had had enough. The Anarch revolt brew to a storm when they started diabolizing antediluvians, or so the rumors go. I never saw one fall, but rumor has it that at least two, maybe more, antediluvians were destroyed around this time by enterprising anarchs who became infinitely more powerful when they did so. They did not just destroy these vampires, you understand. They did not just burn them and render them to ash. They did not just drink their blood and watch their bodies decompose rapidly, no. They drank their souls. They gained those antediluvians' powers. And in doing so, well, such individuals swiftly become corrupted by the sin within them. I will leave it at that. I can say that with personal knowledge and experience. So clans were falling. Clan founders were falling. The old ways could no longer stand. And so, those elders in the middle, they convened with the Anarchs and they said, we need a way out of this situation. This can no longer continue. And some Anarchs, con they conceded. It was too dangerous now to be a vampire. And so the Camarilla was formed, or Camarilla if you prefer. And the Camarilla was formed on the basis of seven clans. The Bruja, the Gangrel, the Malkavians, Nosferatu, Toreador, Tremere, and Ventru. They came together. Others were invited. Some were outlawed from joining. And they established a masquerade, which you will have heard a lot about. It was essentially the rule that you could not show your true nature to the kind to prevent another inquisition. That could no longer be. And you could still remain anarch as long as you abided by the Camarilla traditions. There were other traditions, of course, but I will leave that to a Camarilla kindred to tell you. So the Anarch revolt was stymied. But not all Anarchs were satisfied with this resolution. Some felt that this was just putting themselves back under the heel of manipulative elders, and so they formed the Sabbat. The Sabbat were the sect though at this time they were barely more than a blood cult, that believed they should be beasts. They should not be beholden to humanity. They should not try and strive for the humanity within them. They should be the monsters that they knew themselves to be. They should continue hunting antediluvians, Methuselah's elders, and enriching themselves on their power. Because why not? The world is free and they were free to do it. Sounds very wonderful, doesn't it? Sounds almost utopic, and that is because it is. When you become a blood-crazed monster, the crazed part is the part that sticks. Eventually you lose all aspects of yourself and give in entirely to the beast within you, and all that wants to do is feed. You swiftly forget why you joined up with such a philosophy. Still, with the masquerade in place, the next 500 years or so were relatively peaceful. Certain clans enjoyed certain prosperities. The Renaissance certainly did the clans Torridor and Tremere very well. Clan Giovanni rose to prominence, the clan of death as it's often known now, in Venice and within the merchants, as did clan Ventru. The La Sombra loosened their grip on the church, which one could argue they had lacked to any sufficient degree. The Zimitsi abandoned their ancient homeland in much number and they spread widely. Malkavians and Nosferatu, they remained in the background, the Gangrel, they remained in the wilderness, outcasts and nomads, but in all, 
civilization, kindred society, canine society, it continued. Camarilla warred with Sabat several times over the centuries. The Sabat warred with itself several times over the centuries. But between the 15th century and the 20th century, there was a relative harmony. The greatest enemy you could face was probably upsetting your own prince. But that would vary from domain to domain. But then the 20th century came. And with the 20th century came all kinds of portents. We have this thing, this idea that and the end times are coming. Certain soothsayers and doomsayers claim that this time called Gehenna is upon us. It come the 20th century, all the signs have occurred. These signs include the death of a clan. That happened several hundred years before. They include a time when the blood grows so thin in canine veins that they can no longer embrace child. This has happened. We call them thin bloods now. They said, when an antediluvian rose and destroyed his entire clan to glut himself on their blood, Gehenna was truly upon us, and that happened somewhere, I think it was Pakistan, I was not there, I cannot attest to it, but it was quite, quite the event. A clan all but fell, and while I understand some of its members still exist tonight, that week of nightmares was destructive to many domains. As far as even rational kindred were concerned, Gehenna was here, the end times were here, and what happens with the end times? All antediluvians rise, all Methuselahs rise, and they all slake their thirst on kindred like you and me, but whereas I have the capability of surviving, kindred like you would fall readily like matchsticks. And yet here we are, we are still here. The 20th century has passed, we are into the 21st, Certainly things have changed, and we'll get on to why, but we remain, we survive. If you ask some scholars, it is because Gehenna has been averted. Hurrah, let us celebrate, I'll lead the Hosannas. But others claim that it has merely been delayed. That a great sacrifice was made that staved off Gehenna for just a little while. Or that that sacrifice is happening right now in North Africa, in the Middle East, with the crusade of Sabat in that region of the world. That all of their blood is going into keeping Gehenna at the door rather than coming through it. I cannot say I'm no scholar of apocalyptic nonsense. All I know is to live night to night and year to year. And so far, I've been doing that very well. We should talk about recent events, events that have very much changed the way we look at things, and a lot of them are contained in this Jihad diary. The Jihad is not the mortal use of the word, it is an eternal war. It is the mass manipulation of child by their elders. This book compiled, assembled, I should say, by the scholar Beckett has within its transcripts, journal entries, emails, blogs, interviews, photographs, artwork. Beckett went on a journey around the world and he interviewed Canaanites far and wide to find out the truth of Gehenna, to find out the truth of Jihad. Is it true that we are all being manipulated by our elders? Is it true that we are all destined to die for their whim? It is quite a fascinating book. Even I'm in here, although everything written about me is a lie. I cannot attest to the rest of it, but it is at least an interesting read before dawn comes. Some events recently that Beckett witnessed included one that presaged some events in Vienna recently that were quite explosive. He encountered the Tremere known as Kana. Kana, she were, used to be a rather ineffectual prince in France and eventually became primogen of an American city by the name of Milwaukee. Not a grand title by any stretch. But she broke free from that clan's blood bond. She read a book called The Book of the Grave War, or so I'm told. And this book somehow worked a magic that snapped her brain and snapped the bond. She broke free from the Tremere, and the Tremere, if you are unfamiliar, are a clan of warlocks who believe that the blood bond is the most important thing. 
ensuring loyalty is the most important thing. They are a pyramid. From the top down go the orders. And all rewards go from the bottom up. And Karna, a brick in that pyramid, left. This war was unprecedented. And she took other Tremere with her. Starting in Milwaukee, sprawling across the United States, even touching Europe now. I do not know where they went, but I understand they lead their own house now. They call themselves House Karna. It is quite a fascinating turn of events for the Tremere, and will not be the only tragedy that they suffer. Most curiously, there was no great retribution from Vienna, where the Tremere's sanctuary can be found, I am given to understand, or could be found, I should say. Certainly, some traditions remain the same. The vying for political power over domains such as Chicago continues. Same with Los Angeles, with its pretensions of being an anarch-free state. But some changes, massive changes, occur in domains such as Washington, D.C., the very home of information. The great and ancient La Sombra, Marcus Vitel, emerges from the dark, thought dead, takes the city from the Sabbat and declares for neither Camarilla or Sabbat and says this city is open to all outsiders it is sanctuary for all from the Jihad for apparently Vitel was tired of being manipulated this ancient Roman and he said you are all free to reside here to take sanctuary to my bosom as long as you serve me he has all the graces of a mafia chieftain but Marcus Vitel does very well by it. There is talk of demons rumbling beneath domains like Montreal. Well, there has always been talk of that. There is the talk of the Fourth Sabbat Civil War starting in Mexico City. I cannot claim that, that is accurate because Mexico City has been largely vacated in recent years, what with the mass migration of Sabbat across the Atlantic into more heated areas. The Giovanni, the clan of death, as I have already mentioned, have undergone several changes. The many faces of the clan of death have risen from the dead to show that the clan of death will constantly change, and now they hide away, whether in Venice. I understand they even have some holdings in Sicily now, which is interesting. I wonder which La Sombra they made deals with to share that isle with Castel d'Ombro. The followers of Set and the Banu Hakim, both. The Banu Hakim were often, in case you have misheard, been referred to as the Asamites. Do not call them that. They do not like that. They have never liked that. They prefer the Banu Hakim, so that is how I will refer to them. And you would do well to do the same. Those two clans, prominently based in the Middle East, North Africa, have both made overtures towards the big sects, the Camarilla, the Anarchs. It seems they wish to forego their independence because they can see something coming. And whether it is merely the army of Sabat marching on their territory and finally they realize they need allies, or whether it is another reason, it seems at least one of the sects is going to have its numbers bolstered before long. Strange things arise, spectre of an ancient antediluvian emerging over the Alps and pursuing vampires willy-nilly. House Tremere and Clan Tremere suffering massive fractures, both as a result of their ancient diablery of another clan founder and due to internal conflicts surrounding philosophy, not just related to Karna. I understand Karl Schrecht is a very influential Tremere in these nights. The Bruja, a clan that could often be typified by not having a stereotype, have somehow, in large part, fallen into step with one another marched in the same direction. Just the last few years, it is amazing to see the changes that Gehenna can bring. But it is not just Gehenna that is bringing these changes. Certain 
organizations of kindred, certain organizations of mortals have pressed us into making changes to our lifestyle, shall we call them, existences. There are more eyes on us these nights, you understand, both each other and from the mortals. It is a time for another inquisition, a second inquisition, and we are feeling its effects tonight and for the last few years, and I imagine it will go on for some time, because once again we made the terrible decision to overreach, but that is probably a subject for another talk. Many of these things that I speak of are within this jihad diary, and you may be thinking, well, that is an interesting trove of information, gentlemen, but how am I supposed to get hold of it? Well, in a way, be grateful, because there is a red lister, as the Camarilla calls them, a, an anathema, a canine so vile and base that the Camarilla believe all good canines should be seeking out her destruction. Her name is Kementiri. She gained access to Beckett's diary, and I am given to understand she disseminated it widely to allies and enemies alike, maybe even mortal institutions. So perhaps that explains some of our position tonight, why we are in such peril. Because all of the secrets bound in this book are no longer secrets. The same thing happened when the Book of Nod gained widespread reading. People panicked. The end times became near. When the Book of the Grave War was read by Karna, people changed. The blood changed. Our history has power, and you would do well to know it in order to know your future. I suppose uh, we should conclude. It is often best to move between locations, stay in not one place for too long a time, because, as I say, there are certain eyes on us. I would certainly recommend, little neonate, that you do not travel to Jerusalem. There is a buzz of Malkavian activity in that city, and if rumors are to be believed, it may be because their founder is waking up beneath that already hostile capital. Certainly, this jihad diary would see you in good stead, but you should know that everything within it is just prologue, because within a mere handful of years, but a blink of an eye, if a canide could be concerned with blinking, our world has been turned upside down, our existences have been utterly threatened, and not by each other, not by diablerie addicted sabbat not by anarchs hungry for power, not by the Camarilla purging their own number for elitist reasons, but by the mortals. Once again, our feeding stock bites back. And we will speak about that.